Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to TEDx. Like the introduction video said, we're going to hear some things about um, different ideas today. My name is Michael McCormick. I used to be the principal here at uh, Rancho Verde High School, where this event is being hosted today. And now I'm down at the district office. And um, so if we can go ahead and switch, and um, here we are, get my stuff up here. So one of the concepts that, um, that I've really come to think about a lot is this idea that students are like athletes. And athletes, as you know, practice a lot. And um, during those practices, before their performance, they get a lot of very specific and immediate feedback about what they're doing. Think about the basketball player that's perfecting their free throw shot. Think about the linemen on the football team that are lining up. What's the first step? How do you read what's going to happen across the field from you? And how do you react and respond to that? And if you're going to execute during the performance or during the game, the more practice you have at perfecting that execution, the, more, the, the chances become much greater that when you're under pressure and you're in that game in the midst of what's happening in the competition, chances are you're going to take the right action. And so I want to take you through just a little bit today. Now that's a neat looking car. And that's me driving that car on the racetrack. And uh, what it might be a little bit hard to see is that I have a driving coach. There's somebody who's sitting right next to me, telling me, giving me immediate feedback, go faster, break here, turn a little tighter here, make sure you hit your corners just right. And um, what, what I've tried to do is see, is there a way to replicate the coaching that I'm receiving in this race car, and how do we transfer that into the classroom? We know something about the way the brain works and the way that we acquire new information. We know that there's a very emotional side to learning, and so do you think that I'm in a good place to be learning there? It's something I want to do, right? See, ever since I was a little boy, my dream was to be a race car driver. All right. Now, when I think about high school students and middle school students and coming to school, I wonder how many people think, I'm so excited to be here at school today because today I'm going to learn about stoichiometry and chemistry. I'm going to learn about how to conquer the quadratic uh, formula. Probably not, right? But there are, there are a few people out there that, that want to do that. So a couple of conditions here in the race car. One is I really want to be there, so I'm emotionally excited about learning. There's a little bit of fear and danger connected to that because I know that if I really mess up, I could right, probably crash the car. So there's high value there. And um, it's something that I'm very interested in. So all of my senses are heightened and aware. Do you feel like that in the classroom too often? Probably, probably not. Hard to recreate that, you know, the sounds of the race car and, and what's happening. So sometimes, now I'm going to give you a little bit of what happens when you maybe take a bit of a risk. Now let me kind of orient you the, to this slide here. There's a couple of things that I think are important for you to know. Um, first of all, this is RPMs, so how fast the motor's going. This is miles per hour. This over here shows where the car is on the racetrack. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a little red dot here and we start the video. You're gonna see the driver here is gonna be coming around this corner and then down this straightaway. And when you get to this, just this little dog leg right here, I want you to see what happens. The other thing that's important to know about this is this little circle up here represents what's called a friction circle. And it's, it's about G-forces and acceleration. And so 
This is kind of the reverse now. I'm in a race car, loving life, but look at all this data that I have here. And I'm learning something about physics because I know that if I stab the brakes and try to stop the car too quickly, what do you think is gonna happen? Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna skid, I'm gonna lose traction. Or if I turn the wheel too tightly, same thing, I'm gonna lose traction. So we have to know something about the physics that occur with G-forces. So let's play this and watch what happens. So see, see the red dot coming around that corner. Okay, 60 miles an hour, going for the pass, up to 100 miles an hour. Approaching that little dog leg. Just a very slight maneuver here is all that's required. Uh-oh. Now, let's bring that back just a minute. And I want you to focus again on what's happening up here with this, this G circle that's measuring the forces of acceleration. See? right in the center, so you're going straight because there's no, there's no lateral force in any direction. Watch what happens. See the red dot move completely outside the circle? Okay, so what is this all about? Failure is, let me, look at, let me talk to you about it this way. Schooling is based on grades. A good, F bad, right? And a lot of times, when you're submitting an assignment, you're shooting for perfection the first time. And I want to submit to you today that this is not really the way that the world beyond school works because especially in development and we think about innovation it's about little successes and failures and it's the failures that inform your next steps so that think about the athlete again let's take it back somebody practicing free throws okay if you start missing those free throws, you need to make an adjustment and practice in a different way. Okay? Same as on the racetrack. Now, the stakes are higher there because when you crash, there's physical damage that occurs. But let's bring this into the classroom. What would it be like if you had multiple chances to perfect something? To perfect that writing assignment that you're doing? To perfect some other performance task that you're doing? And wouldn't it be nice that if you got it wrong, just like in a video game, when you die, what happens? You get to start fresh, right? So let's take a look at this. This is a process called iteration. Iteration means simple little steps moving towards something that is going to be ultimately at a very high level. When I was a kid, this game right here, developed by Atari, uh, was called Asteroids. And you guys, uh, I don't know if you're aware of that, but that was my favorite game when I was a kid. And um, now, through lots of iteration, lots of failures, we now have something that looks like this today, Activision PlayStation 3. So we went from here to here. And um, that picture that you see of me is with a guy named Nolan Bushnell. Now, the thing that's important to know about Nolan Bushnell is he's the creator of Atari. And he also gave somebody whom you might be aware of uh, his first job. And that's a guy by the name of Steve Jobs. So this guy that I'm standing with creates Atari. And when I had the chance to talk with him, he said, you know, I made a lot of money off of addiction. What kind of addiction do you think he's talking about? 
gaming addiction. And this whole concept that if you fail, you get to start over again. Isn't that something? What would it be like if we took that concept and moved it into the classroom? Where you could be on some sort of a piece of software that it would help you learn your standards, do it in a gaming-like environment where you're addicted to learning, and failure is no big deal because you just get to start over again. How about that? There was a study done at Columbia University where it was done through, of all things, ceramics. So they took one group of students that were making pots, kept them separate from another group of, of students that were making pots. You know, pottery, like ceramic pots. They told the first group over here, your goal is to make as many pots as you can make in a specific time. They told the second group over here, your goal is to make the perfect pot. Do you think the first group made the perfect pot? Remember, their goal was to make as many as they could. And the goal of the second group over here was to make the, pot, uh, the perfect pot. Which group do you think ultimately did make the perfect pot? The first, raise your hand if you think it was the group over here, the first group. Okay, raise your hand if you think it was the group over here, the second group. Okay. For the folks that selected the first group, you're correct. Why do you think that the group who was told to make the most pots wound up making the perfect pot? Okay, you keep on doing it. You perfect it. It's this process of iteration. You make enough pots, and pretty soon you're going to get one that's perfect. So even though that wasn't the end goal, that's indeed what happened. And so I take that, and I'd like you to connect the dots to say that there's something to be said for repetition. Repetition in a gaming environment, because I know when I first got Angry Birds, I was a big fail boat. I mean, I was just a failure at that thing. But as I died and got to start over again, right, I got better. I got better, right? Imagine what that would be like in your classroom. So, so in this, I'm saying my classroom is a race car. Stakes are high, emotions are high, high cost, you know, high risk, high reward. Okay, but what if we took this video game concept, moved it into the classroom, where you had lots of opportunity to build your perfect pot? Almost finished up. We know that the skills for the 21st century that our high-tech businesses are looking for is, look, when Apple goes to hire somebody, the company Apple or Google goes to hire somebody, they expect their workers to be able to solve the common problem, the one that has an easy answer. What they're really looking for is the employee who can solve the uncommon problem, the really challenging problem. Is when you have something to sell and you can figure out what nobody else has figured out, you now have what's called competitive advantage. Okay? If you're the only company that can build an iPhone, you're probably going to sell a lot of iPhones, right? Okay? If you're the only company that makes that particular video game that I was showing, like Asteroids or the other one that was up there, you're going to make a lot of money. And my, my suggestion to you today is that the way you learn as students to be able to solve the uncommon problem is to build up your resilience, build up your persistence. And I think the way you can build up your persistence is to have a motto, fail early and fail often. You ever thought about that? No, it's totally counterintuitive, right? 
So I'm going to leave you with this thought today. Failure is very different from quitting. Quitting is giving up. But if you fail early and fail often, you might be able to build that perfect pot. Thank you. Thank you.